Psalm 78, Psalm 78, in verse 12. We're going to go back to our theme that we will look at, refocus on all different things come about, and uh, we change sometimes, but we're going back to refocus. I think that's what we need to do is to refocus in this very uh, forever changing world. Our world is constantly changing, not for the good, but for the worse. And uh, we need to refocus on what is important in our lives. And let's look here. Uh, I'm getting a little bit to get there. There we go, 78. Let's look at verse 12 and to all the way to verse 20. I'm going to read to you. It says, Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea. He caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand up as a heap. In the daytime he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink and as, a, as out of the great deeps. He brought str uh, uh, streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for that you are a God of provision. You provide for your children. Lord, it might not be what we want, but you always provide. Help us, Lord, to trust that, to believe in that. Can God do it? Yes, you can, Lord. You've been taking care of us for many years now. And Lord, you, you even provide a heaven, a place we can go and life is over for us. Amen. You are a great God. We praise your name this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So today we're going to continue with refocus. And as our theme for the year, you look there, refocus. You know, sometimes our mind is out of focus. Uh, today, you, you know, we get these cell phones and they already have the focus for you. You don't have to refocus. In the old days, you have to buy a camera and you have to play with the camera to refocus. And sometimes you have to say to the people, can you smile? Can you? And people lost that will to smile because it takes a long time <laughs> to refocus the camera. But those days are gone, so we have, you know, everything done for our convenience. So today, I believe so when it comes to biblical principles for God's children, I think we need sometimes to refocus on what is important. We need to refocus. For an example, I'm going to, it's not in my lesson, but the Lord just putting this in my heart, and I'm going to share with you uh, this morning when I share with the kids, and we look at the word wisdom, and one thing I share with the kids about wisdom, the first thing uh, as we walk with wisdom, or we want to walk in wisdom, is the first thing is, what the Bible says is to walk with God. If we walk with God, we walk with wisdom, the second point I used to them was integrity. Imagine, walk with God in the integrity of my own heart. So that's what the world needs these days. So, um, I saw this, this thing. So, anyway, we, uh, we talk about this a little bit this morning. But anyway, I'll go back to my lesson. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, but uh, uh, we talk about uh, a refocus. So, the title this morning, I mean, the theme is what's in my mind. We're talking about, we're going to talk about the mind. But this, the, today, the, the, the title of the last message is, Can God Do This? Can God Do This? Well, how many times we, in our own private lives, we, we uh, face obstacles, problems, situations. And everybody has different situations, obstacles in life. And we find ourselves... Can God do this? I don't know if you ever asked that question. Maybe you never did. But do we have a doubt that God's going to do it? Do we have a second guess? Do we have, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. For an example, you say, well, if, why God cannot take the pain away that I'm suffering? Can God take this problem away from me? Yeah, I'm giving you an example as I was thinking about this message this morning. The Apostle Paul was one of those guys that was something wrong with his body, and he went three times to the Lord and asked him. And the Lord said, my, uh, 
is sufficient for thee. He said, I'm not going to take it away from you. You're going to have this. And my grace is sufficient for you to deal with it. Sometimes, you know, in despair, we say, Lord, why can you not take this? Why are you not listening? God is listening. But sometimes he chooses. Why? I do not know. I don't know. I'm not God. But I don't know. Sometimes you go, Lord, why don't? We don't know. So, just want to remind you about where we're going here this morning about what's in the mind. So, folks, we can either focus our minds on ourselves, on the things of the world, on others, or on God. It's a choice that we make. As we march this world, we have a mind, all of us have a mind to think and to process information. But there's one thing that all of us can do. We can either, like I said, we can either focus our minds on ourselves, many people do that, on the things of this world. Many people are saturated by, by material things. That's what they live for. They buy one thing, they can't stop. They buy another, they buy another. Wonder why the average person in America owns about, uh, owes about $50,000 in credit cards. That's amazing. I mean, I want you to stop and say, where in the world did I have spend this money? I don't even remember what I did to owe so much money. But they say that's the average person in America. I don't mean, that's, I don't mean it's everybody. It's not going to be an average thing. But anyway, we can focus our minds on things or on other people. Try to, you know, to, to do what they do. We're talking about movie stars and rock stars and oh, other stars. And people want to be just like them. Listen, folks, be who you are, and God will love you for that. Right. I am pretty content for who I am. Believe me. I am pretty content for who I am. I'm not rich. I'm not poor. I'm right there. <laughs> you know, pretty content. You know, you know, it's like, well, people, you know, have a tendency that they, their minds are wrapped up on others. You know, it's only if you look at this person, let, look, be who you are. Enjoy life for who, you are, for who God made you. So, oh, we can focus our minds on God. I think that's the best thing. So, this morning I want to help you, uh, help all of you to focus on the Lord. I, I used this illustration before, but I'm, I think it goes with the message, and I, uh, I'm going to uh, share with you. So, a man named John. He said, oh, Pastor, what do you, want you already shared this. I think it goes with the message. That's why I put it here again. I was walking along a steep cliff one day when he accidentally got too close to the edge and fell. And on the way down, he grabbed a branch on which temporarily st stopped his fall. He looked down, and with, with, uh, with horror in his face, he saw this big, steep canyon. And in no way he was going to get out of there. So, and, um, so he couldn't hang... Uh, uh, onto the branch for the rest of his life there. So, uh, so the, he was just trying to climb up, and he couldn't. So he was just stuck in there holding in that branch. So, so John began yelling for help. Uh, and that somebody would, uh, would, uh, somebody would passing would hear his voice and hope that somebody would, uh, would hear him, and he was going, help, help. Is anyone up there? He yelled for hours, but no one heard him. He was about to give up when he heard a voice, John, John, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm done here. I can see you, John. Are you, are you all right? Yes, but who are you and where are you? I am the Lord, John. I'm everywhere. The Lord, you mean God? Yes, John, that's me. God, please help me. I promise. Look what he says. I will get me down. Uh, you get me down from here. I will stop sinning. I will read. I will, I will be a really good person. I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will go to church every time the doors are open. The Lord replied, easy on that promise, John. Let's just get you down from there, and then we will talk about it. Now, here's what I want you to do, John. Listen carefully, okay? Okay, Lord, I'll listen. Well, do, uh, well, do, I'll do anything you say, Lord. Just tell me what to do. Okay. Are you ready, John? Yes, Lord. Let go of the branch. What? <laughs> Said John, do you want me to die? 
I said, let go of the branch, John. Trust me. Let go of the branch. There was a long silence. Finally, John yelled, help, help. Is anybody there? Oh, no. Sounds like us sometimes, doesn't it? We say we want to serve the Lord and know, and know his will. Then when he tells us what to do, we turn a deaf ear and we don't do it. How many times the Lord's speaking to us and it just pricks our hearts, convicts our heart. The Lord is calling us and we don't do it. You say, Lord, you can send somebody else. That's not me. You're making a mistake. Isn't that what uh, Moses tried to do? I can't speak. <laughs> send somebody else, Lord. You don't understand. You're calling the wrong person. No, Moses, you're the right person. And I'm not going nowhere else because you are the man. See, Isaiah got it right. When he saw the holiness of God, he said, You are my Lord, send me. Isaiah got it right. So they were, so there was a, uh, that was Israel's problem here. They were called out of Egypt to follow the Lord by faith. However, they seemed to constantly doubt the power, the promises, and the presence of God. And as they traveled to the promised land, the ant, the entire attitude of their hearts was summed up in verse, uh, in four, in four questions. Can God do this? Every time they question, they whine, they complain, they doubt God, and God over and over again came to their rescue. God was with them, and let me tell you this morning: if you're a child of God here this morning, God is with you. I'm going even deeper. God is in you. What a great hope, doesn't it? When they asked this question, they were doubting everything about the Lord. They needed a lesson in trust. So this morning I realized that we many times act just like the children of Israel, and I include myself in this, all of us here. We may never say with our mouth, but our actions many times reveals the question that we can just say, can God do this? This morning I was here. By myself, and I'm not boasting about this. First thing I thought is I need to talk with my father. I came here to this altar. I was just there alone. I talked with my God. And I said, Lord, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of trying to see I do I, everything I can to build this church. Lord, this is your church. You have to build it, not me. I'm just going to serve you from now on. I've been trying for five years. You know what? Lord, it's yours. You build it. I will just serve you as one of your servants. Because ultimately, that was my prayer to the Lord this morning. It was just very heavy in my heart. It's just like, Lord, it's your church. I give it to you. You take care of it. I'll serve you as a good steward. But it ultimately is yours. So, we may never say, with our mouth, like I said, we may never even talk about it, but sometimes our actions, we say those words, can God do this? Can God build this church? Yes, he can, if it's his will. We all know how powerful God is. We all know that. The scriptures reveal that. What he has done in the life of, of it, the Israelites, what he has done in the life of many other Christians in the church and, and the church, and, and what he had done for us in the past as well. I Believe me, if we sit down and we talk about what God has done in our lives individually, we have so many things that God has done. He had done so many good for us. But there are times, and maybe you are living it now, I don't know, on which we understand who God is and what He can do for us. But deep in our hearts and minds, we ask the question, can you do this, Lord? Can you do this for me? How can you do this? And we don't know how. So today I would like to tell you and show you from the Scriptures that God can there's nothing, listen to this, there's nothing impossible with our God. Nothing impossible. The God we serve still the Lord of glory. He's still the King of kings and He's still able to do all the things. Whatever is your situation, your predicament, your trouble, your doubt, this morning the Lord can help you to overcome it. No, don't misunderstand me here. There are situations in 
Sometimes in the life of the church, sometimes in, in, in families' lives, sometimes in individual lives, and which like Paul went through, the Lord will allow us to go through until the day we go to heaven. And we don't know why. God chooses to do that. We don't know why. Folks, let me tell you this. I came down with cancer. The Lord took it away. Some others that came down with cancer, the Lord didn't take it away. The Lord took them home. I don't know how to answer those questions. We just trust the Lord each and every day. And you know what? He does great miracles in the lives of some, and He allows some things to go in the lives of others. What do we do with that? If you are one of those persons, listen to what God said to Paul. My grace is sufficient for thee. God will give us the grace to endure the pains of life. And sometimes can be hard. Now, let's look at this for several points. Number one, the people's condition. If we look at our text with close attention this morning, we can see that the psalmist describes how much God has done for his people. The Lord took them out of, out of uh, the land of Egypt. Now, what were they were doing there? They were in the, in the house of bondage. They were slaves in Egypt. And now, you know, it is sad when they said, we had all these things in Egypt. They were lying. They were slaves. They're crying out to God to free them. And God sent Moses down there to get them out. So the Lord took them out of Egypt, the land of bondage, and guide them through the wilderness all the way to the promised land. Now the question is, why did God took so long to get his people to the promised land? Did God didn't know the direction? Did God got lost? Did God didn't have a map? Maybe God didn't have a GPS. I don't know. Maybe in those days there was no cell phones. You know what? It was not God. It was the people. Right. It was the people's hearts who doubt God all the time. And God tried to teach them, teach them, teach them. And they came, kept rebel against God. That's why it took them so long. Actually, it took them so long that that generation, everyone died in the desert. Because of their rebellious. So was God unfaithful to them? No. They were unfaithful to God. They doubted God. They complained. Ten gods. You see this in verse 19. Now, letter A, they were faithless people. They were faithless people. Look at verse 20 and verse, and, and verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflow and give them bread also. I'm sorry, can he give them bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Look at verse 78, verse 40. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? So they were faithless people. Where was the people who God called, uh, called them, this, I'm sorry, here is the people that God called themselves, them to be his, his people. There, here is a people where you should have trusted the Lord without reservation. Yet it seemed obvious they saw the power of God. They saw it their own eyes. They witnessed. They took fruit of it. And yet they complained. Can you imagine being in the desert where there's no water and see water gushing out God's provision? And they complained. Isn't that a, like, a lot like the people of the Lord today? And I'm generally talking here. Instead of trusting God and living by faith, look what he said, we worry and we fret. Folks, it doesn't make, it doesn't have to be that way. I want to tell you now that we have a God in whom we can trust without reservation and without fear. We don't have to constantly ask the question, can God do this? Listen, please, if we have faith enough in our God, He can do much more in our lives and mind than we can ever imagine. If we totally say, Lord, is my life, I give it to you, use it, and we live in that submission every day, God can do things in our lives that we cannot even imagine. Put it like this, here's Moses, kills a man in Egypt, runs for his life, so, he don't, so the Pharaoh doesn't kill him. He's there hiding in the desert, and God said, Moses, I have something great for you. Moses tried to walk out of it until he surrendered to the Lord, and God did something tremendous in his life. Here's another one, Daniel. He went to Babylon. He is a man that submitted his heart to God, and God used him in a tremendous way. His three friends. 
refused to submit to worship a statue of this uh, Nebuchadnezzar. They trusted God, and God did tremendous. What a testimony of faith and belief. Joseph went to Egypt. What happened to Joseph? Was a slave, false accused, put in prison. You know what? He trusted God. And God bring him from a slave into the second person in Egypt to save many people. You see what God, and these people, they knew some of them knew the promises of God when God had something for them. But they had no idea what God could do through them. You know what? The same thing with us. We, we God, can, God, God can use us in a tremendous way, all of us here, in a way we can never imagine. So, folks, a faithless heart fails to see the, God's goodness. A faithless heart doubts God's power and God's provision. A faithless heart questions God. A faithless heart sarcastically asks, can God do this? May you individually uh, don't be like the children of Israel. We were recipients of God's provision from their daily life. But instead of seeing the goodness of the Lord, they kept on doubting God and questioning Him. Can God do this? Imagining every day they opened their doors, it was food right there. That was God's provision. That was enough to say, praise God, thank you, Lord. I don't have to go get a day job. It's right there. I can eat and support my family. And you know what? They kept on murmuring. They kept on complaining. They kept on questioning God. They kept on accusing Moses. They kept on doing those things. So let it be, they were, they were forgetful people. They were forgetful people. The nation of Israel seemed to be unable to remember all the great miracles that God performed on their behalf. How He had delivered them from Egypt by the plagues. How he, he parted the Red Sea. How he made the waters of Mara pure. How he had put the enemies on the run. How he had proven himself to be God and to be all powerful time and time again. They were forgetful of the mighty power of God. They had witnessed with their own lives and their own very eyes. They saw that. Can you imagine walking through that Red Sea and says the waters were in a heap? I mean, the waters stood up. Can you imagine? And, and Far as we know, they went in the deepest part of that sea. That means their waters were way up. And they walked right through it. Only God can do that. They saw their own very eyes. And soon they got to the other side. They're complaining again. Wow. Wow. They should be the people that had the greatest testimony of God's power, of God's provision to this whole world. They failed miserably. So, folks, may we refocus our minds this morning towards the things that God has done in our lives because it's easy to forget. What God has done for you in the past? Can you name it? Can you count it? Can you recall to your mind? I'll tell you what, I am forever thankful. You know what God did to me? He saved me. He saved my soul. Oh, He led me to lead my dad to the Lord and many others through the years. You know what? He removed cancer from me. Amen. He guided me to the right people, to the right doctors, the right things. Oh, no, 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 no. God. God. See, God, we, have, we are easy to forget sometimes. God reach out to us and save our souls. That is something that we should never forget and take lightly. That is something we should, it should drive us to the house of God, to His Word, to serve Him. Why I read my Bible every morning? Because I always remember the goodness of the Lord, what He did to me. He saved me. I can't get over that. I'm sorry, folks. I can't get, I'm not, I shouldn't apologize. I, I can't get over that. The reason I am saved, I'm a child of God, it drives me to His Word. I want to know Him. Love to sing God's Word. I'm not the greatest singer, but you know what? Love to sing God's Word. I sing all day, not just here at church. I love to sing God's way. You know what? I want to praise Him for what He has done for me. I just want you to get it this morning, to get it, the goodness of our God. It's how we can refocus on what is important. What is this life about? Live and, and uh, have things and more things, and in the end of the things, the things get all rusted and old. You know, you buy a new toy and a new tool, a new thing, and before you know it, you go, oh, 
It's full of rust, and he's not good anymore. Things get old. You know what? Our God is forever new. Amen. He's forever new. How many times has God come through for you? How many times has he moved mountains, part of the waters in your life? How many times he had lifted a veil of affliction and suffering in your life and allowed the right of his glory to brighten your day? How many times he has spoken peace to you in the midst of the storms? How many times he had he met your needs, done the impossible, proven himself to be God for you? How many times he, we we forgotten all about that? I tell you what, folks, it is amazing how our minds play tricks on us and how, how emotion sometimes, you know, even makes us not forget about the things God, God have done for us. God is always faithful to his children and always will be faithful. So if we die, what's going to happen? Oh, poor me. No, I'm going home to be with them. It's victory. The Bible says, grave, who is thy, that what is thy thing? Grave, what is thy victory? It's no, it's no victory. You know, our victory is in Jesus Christ. Heaven is a place of joy. Wow. So God is always faithful to his children. We can, doubt, we can doubt as much as we want, like the children of Israel. We can question him as much as we want. Nothing is going to change that. That's our minds. My friend, we need to take a look back this morning and remember all the things that God has done for me and for you. If God did, did then, we can be sure that he will do it now again and do it tomorrow again. That's the kind of God He is. We need to have faith and believe that God can do the impossible. Let, it be. Let us see. They were foolish people. Look at verse 19. Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The Lord, what he did over and over again for them, and they ask God this question. Look what it says. Yea, they spake against God and said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? That's a question mark right there. They're doubting God. They're questioning him. They're questioning his provision. Folks, the very reason that you are alive today is God's provision. The very reason that you're walking is God's provision. What do you mean? Well, oxygen enough for you to breathe. Otherwise, you'd be dead. God made a world for you and I to live in. That's God's provision. God brings the rain for us so you can drink water. Isn't that God's provision? So we close our eyes and think, oh, it's Mother Nature. Baloney. There's no such thing as Mother Nature. It's Father God. Amen. That's what it is. So, folks, this is a people that show... That saw the mighty hand of God taking care of them. They saw it their very eyes. They eat the food that God provides for them. These are the people that should uh, saw the provision of, uh, of the Lord. And they fail. They even question God. By asking can God, they provoke, they, they prove their ignorance of his power and his person. And it's this same sense was played out many times during the course of Israel, of Israel wilderness wanderings. And after they arrive in Canaan as well. On time, uh, one time, uh, on what I wrote here. Oh, one, one time, uh, they, they came to my, or oh, comes to mind right now. I'm sorry, the twelve spies that went into the land of Canaan, uh, and while they encountered a race of people, we know the Anakins, they they were giants. When they the ten faithless spies saw the giants, they look at them and they thought they were like grasshoppers. It's like, well, if God took you out of the armies of Egypt, if free from them. If God through, through, through the, uh, uh, got you through the Red Sea, if God provides for you in the wilderness, can God take away the giants? You know what? They were looking at this side. They forgot God. You know, there was 12. Maybe we remember that. Ten was, they were faithless. But two said, we can do this because we serve a great God. You see, I'll give you an example. One time we were a little choir in our church. First Baptist Church, many years ago. Our church was rebuilding itself. And our pastor goes, we're going to do the Handel's Messiah. And one guy looks at the, I mean, one guy, he was a bass, he goes, are you out of your mind, pastor? We can never do that. And he looks at him, just smile at him. He, just, he didn't answer, he just smiled. He's like, yes, we can. You know, with God, we can. You know what? 
We practiced. He walked out of the choir. We lost one, got smaller. Guess what? When Christmas play came, oh, yes, we did it. God was with us. You know, sometimes we question God. You know what? If we totally devote our hearts, God can do it. There's nothing impossible with God. May our minds never come to think that way. May we never doubt our God. May we refocus on what God has done for us in the past and continue in the present so we can trust Him with our future. The question should never be, can God do this? This statement should always be, listen, go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. That should be our answer, should be our mindset, should be our heart. Settle on this thing, all right? Look what it says. Dear Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. I want you to see that. Now, not, we should not be like, can God do this? But should, this should be our mindset, our heart, everything about us. My God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. You see, God will supply all my needs. Should be our thought all the time. May we never question God. May we never doubt his promise, his provision. May we never be faithless to the point of complaining and doubting his provision. This was the condition of the people, and I'm afraid sometimes it mirrors the lives of many Christians in our world today. We can trust the Lord, and we can know His will, and we can know what He do. He will provide for you. It might not be what you want. Listen, it might not be huh, uh, like a wonderful steak with, with French fries and whatever you think it is good. It might be just a, a little hamburger here. You know what? But He will provide. Listen, he didn't give the people on Israel every day. He didn't give them like, like filet mignon, but he gave them manna. They didn't die. You see, that's what we have, how we have to trust our God. That's how. So number one, the people's condition. Number two, the character of their God. The character of their God. So integrity is who you are as a person. You know who you are, no matter what people, what people say about you. People can say what they want about you, but deep inside of your heart... You know who you are. So character is what people think of you or speak of you. So right here in chapter uh, 78, the psalmist testifies to us of God's character. And let's, let's look at what he says about God's character. This is somebody that is looking at God and says, this is the God that I know. All right? His promises. Letter A. Look at verse 7, uh, 5, 6, and 7. Look what it says. For he established a testimony in Jacob... And appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come may know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. That they might set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. You see, his promises, he testifies of the character of God. He said, this is our God. He's a God that when he promised, it comes to pass. So this is somebody looking at God and say, listen, folks, this is the God that I know. God was faithful to the Jewish people time after time. Israel sees God, uh, seen God, kept his word, seen God kept his word, I'm sorry, time and time again. He was always faithful to what he had promised for them. So, folks, our God hasn't changed. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still the God who speaks his word and everything God promised will come to pass. Romans chapter 4 verse 21 says, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You see, let it be. You look at the character of God, his performance. Look at verse 4 of Psalm 78. He will not hide them from their children, showing to their generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength in His wonderful works that He had done. Look at verse 12. Marvelous things did He in the sight of, the, of their fathers in the land of Egypt in a field of Zion. So through the history, Israel had enjoyed the presence and the power of the Almighty God. Time and time again, God demonstrated His power in the midst of His people, imagining Seeing him part in the Red Sea, dropping manna from heaven every, every day for 40 years. Imagine seeing God defeating his enemies. Imagine the thrill of seeing his glory as he came down upon the tabernacle. Imagine the pillar of cloud and of fire. God has proven himself time and time again to his people. Did God fail? God did not fail. You know who failed? The people. 
But let me tell you, not everybody failed. There was people there that loved the Lord and saw that and glorified God. You see, I'm not saying that like when you say sometimes you have to be careful with that as, as preachers that sometimes you say, well, no, no. They are in every place, in every place you go, there are people who love the Lord. Do with their heart. They love the Lord, heart, mind, and soul. And others that, you know, they love the Lord, but they don't live as the Lord wants them to live. But let me tell you, the children of Israel, as a nation, they fail. But as individuals, many of them saw the goodness of the Lord. So they saw that. You look at his character. Let us see you see his power. Look at verse 4. And he, he will now hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his words fall. Uh, his works that he had done. So through the history, God had proven that he was stronger than every obstacle they faced. He was more powerful than Egypt, than the Amalekites, he, than, than the Philistines, and he, he was more powerful than the, the An Anakins. He proved himself to be greater than their thirst and their hunger. He was able to overcome all the obstacles that they faced with great power. So God is still all powerful today. He is. He is all-powerful, and He still remains to this day. We have to believe that. God possesses all power in heaven and in earth, Matthew 28, 18. He created everything out of nothing, uh, Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. He sustains everything, Colossians 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 17. So everything is up the power of God. If we, listen, for people to say there's no such thing as God, they're foolish. For people to say that, we you know, we just, Big Bang Theory came to be, that's silly. That is absolute silly. Everything consists because of a great creator, and his name is Jehovah God. So now it is good to hear these things about God, isn't it? The reality, the reality this morning is that, can God do it for me? I believe that he can. I believe that, that he can do it for you what you cannot do for yourself because there is nothing impossible with our God. What we need to do is to refocus our minds in our God. But don't misunderstand me here. Again, let me remind you of that. Like Paul said, there are some things that God, for some reason, whatever, He's God, that He chooses for us to endure for the rest of our days. Letter D, is patience. Look at verse 38. But he being full of compassion, forgive the iniquity and destroy them not. Yea, many of many at time turn he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. You see, the character of God is a patient God. Aren't you glad that our God is patient yeah. with you and me? How many times we are stubborn, foolish? How many times do you say, Lord, thank you for being so patient with me. When am I going to learn? I wonder why the Lord calls us children. We never, we never get to adulthood. He calls us children. It is a reason for that. So while God continues to show himself strong on behalf of his people, Israel, listen to this, continue, continually lack the faith to trust the Lord as they should. Whatever the Bible tells us that that many a time he turned his anger away from them. He was patiently with them. He was patient with them and showing his love towards them. Even though they complain, even though they doubt, even though they question God, God still provide for them and patiently, patiently dealt with them. You know, it's wonderful that God is patient. How long it took God to say this generation should not see the promised land? A long time, 40 years. So we see the people, God, the, the people's condition, number two, we see the character of their God, and number three, the challenge for today. Look at verse six. That the generation to come, that's us, may know them, even the children which should be born, who shall ar uh, arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. And verse 8 says, and, it, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts aright, and though a new spirit was not steadfast with God. You see, we see the challenge for today here. When we look at Israel's history, and the way God proved himself to them, them, then when we consider how he had proven himself in our, in our own lives, 
And when we look at his power and his ability, what we and we to do with that information, these verses tell us uh, in, in, in no uncertainty terms that the Lord expects what, Lord, what the Lord expects from us. What the Lord expects from us? Lord, listen, we, we read the Bible. We know what God says. We know how the children of Israel behave. You know, we know how they question God. How can we learn from that? How should we learn from that? These verses are to the next generation. We can put ourselves there. Number one, or letter A, have trust in, in your God. Have trust in your God. Mark eleven twenty two 22 says, And Jesus sent and said unto them, Have faith in God. Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. Uh, Proverbs 30, verse 5, Every word of God is pure. It is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. See, these verses teaches us that we ought to trust Him for all of our needs in every situation of life. When the world wrings His hands and despair and doubt and asks the question, Can God do this? We believe what the Bible says, and we say to them, yes, he can. Yes, he can. When the world looks and in, in in, in, in in declining morality, escalating violence, economic trouble, decrease attendance in the church, the increasing evil, and ask the question, can God do this? We must be ready uh, with, with the answer, yes, my God can do this. This was banned the way... It was through the Bible, and still today, they question God. But anyway, God can do it. Yes, He can do it. Number one there, under, under that uh, sub-point there, under that letter A, I think you have that on your outline, yes. Daniel in the lion's den. Darius spent the night wondering, worried, if Daniel could have could been saved from the lions. He signed the decree. He passed it out. He cannot return it. And guess what? He, all night, he, he didn't sleep all night. You know why? Because he didn't know the God of Daniel. So he worried all night. He could be all night long. Oh, he's going to die. He's going to be, he's gonna be like a dessert and breakfast for those lions. You know what? Can God do it? Yes, he can. Daniel was sitting with the lions. He said, wow, well, that's, that's, you know. No, it is our God. That's what God can do. God could choose to open the, open the mouth of the lions and chew Daniel. But God in that point said, Daniel, your time is not yet. You're going to show, I'm going to show my power to this king. You know what? He worried all night because he didn't know the God of Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar, you bow down to me. No, we're not. You will bow down to me. If you don't know, bow down to me, I'm going to make you shush kebab. Or shush kebab, right? They said, I don't care what you do of us. Put us on the stick, do shash kebab. We're not bowed down to you. Thank you very much. They went to the, to the fire, and guess what? They came out. There was no shush kebab on them. You know what? Because they serve a great God. He said, can God do that? Yes, he can do that today. Yes, he can. He is the God of miracles. He can do that. So we see. Uh, number three, we see the widow of uh, Zarephath. She stood watching as the prophet ate the last meal and wondered, can God provide for me? Three years later, she was still eating while all around people starve. And when she finished her meal, she should whisper, with all the insurance in her soul, God can. You see that? The disciples on the ship they were in the midst of the storm, and they were, they were finished, and their hearts were, were filled with questions. Can God do this for us? But in the fourth watch of the night, who came to them? Who came to the rescue? The creator God, Jesus, came and said, they thought he was a ghost. I said, I'm not no ghost. What Peter did, can I come to you, Lord? Yes, come right up. Faithless Peter. Look at the storm, forgot God, you know, and what, it took Jesus to grab him by the hand and pick him up and say, you of little faith. Who came to come the storm? God came. See, this is what thou, the God that we serve today can do. Can God do that? Yes, he can. Over and over again throughout the Bible, we can see that our God can do what we cannot do. Right. Remember, a day... Uh, 
I don't know what I wrote here, but I'll, I'll go by. <laughs> so, oh, so letter B, call to mind his past works. Call to mind. Think of the times he has delivered you, when he, he saved you, and the time that he moved mountains in your life. Remembers power and all that he has done for you in the past. Let his past, his past works remind you that he's able, no matter what you face in life, God is able and he will come through for you every time. Let the past be your reminder of the wonderful, powerful God that we serve. Can God do it? Yes, he can. Let us see. Obey his commandments. We see this in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Genuine faith in the Lord always manifests itself in obedience to the Lord and his word. Remember, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing what? The Word of God, by the Word of God. See, when we get onto His Word and allow it to lodge in our hearts, changing us, then we, will, we will, then we will learn to trust Him more and more. Listen, I've been reading my Bible every year. I read through my Bible every year. You know what? I didn't get to the end and said, I'm done. I'll put the book away. I will not start over again. Why? Because I know that God's going to give me something else when I read it again is the words of life. Read it. Try to understand it. Listen to this. Make application of it. Don't read it for read it. Make application of it. Listen, if you get to the end of the year and you don't read through your Bible, don't feel bad. Don't say, oh, Lord, I failed you. No, you did not. He wants you in the words. And if you take three weeks in one verse, then stay three weeks in one verse. That's wonderful. You know how many times I get stuck <laughs> in one chapter? I was going ahead, and this week I got stuck in one chapter. <laughs> you know what? I, I went read it again. And, and I, then the next day, I, uh, uh, two days later, I said, what book was I reading? Okay. Then I'm reading the same chapter, and I didn't realize in the end, oh, I already read this chapter. Lord, uh, you know what? Wonderful. That's what God wants you to be in the Word. So don't be so like, oh, i got to finish. No, no. Stay in the Word. Try to understand. Make application of it. Obey His commandments. So, like, like obedient children, we should obey the Word of God by living it out in our daily lives. God, folks, God gave us His Word so that we can know Him and know how to obey Him. God is not like this, is in secret that we don't know Him. Everything you want to know about your God is in the Word of God. He gave it to us right here. 66 books for us to know Him. Everything you want to know about Him is here. You say, what about this question and that question? One day when you get to heaven, you would see face to face, and you go, ah. Oh. Obviously, if He's not here, it's because He doesn't want you to know. That's why He's God and we are not. The question, I'm not the question, I'll conclude with this. The question this morning is, can God help me? The answer is, yes, he can. If you are not saved here this morning, can God save you? Yes, he can. If you are in constant, constant, constant pain, can God help me? Yes, as grace is sufficient for thee. But I want to be, I don't want to, I want to be pain-free. So did Paul. And God just let him have it until he went home. Some things we don't understand why God does what he does. But he does. And in our own minds, we begin to think that's why we ask the question, can God do this? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Time and time again, if you read through the Bible, you will see that God can do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the wonderful Jehovah God that we serve. His power, Lord, all-knowing, Lord, wonderful God. And Lord, may we not be like the children of Israel who saw the great miracles right in front of their very eyes and time and time again complained, doubt, question you. And Lord, may we trust you no matter what, Lord, when we go through mountains, when we go through valleys, when life hurts, Lord, when we don't know our way out, may we trust you. May we never question your goodness and your provision. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.